This isn't your first time here, you know the rules. You have 60 seconds for each question. Can God create a stone greater than himself? Babies that die go to heaven. Why didn't I die as a baby and now have to live with the risk of going to hell? The universe is thought to be around 13.8 billion years old. Why did God, Hasha, wait so long to create humans? Can God create a stone bigger than himself? It's illogical to answer these types of questions. I'm not saying there's no answer, but it's not logical to answer this question because it is a paradox. What would happen if an unstoppable train and an immovable wall collided? If we said the wall would collapse, well, we noted that the wall couldn't collapse. And if we say the train would start to stop, we mentioned the train couldn't stop. So it would be illogical to try to find an answer to a question like this. If I said yes, that God could create a stone greater than himself, you'd say, I thought God was the greatest. You're using the concepts greatest and greater, and that's why this is a paradox. So it is an immovable wall and an unstoppable train. If I answered no to this question, then one could ask, how could a being who has the power to do anything not have the power to do this? So this question is a paradox. There aren't any yes or no answers to paradoxes. The answers themselves are paradoxes. For example, in physics, we don't compare different quantities. So if I asked you, is 10 kilos greater than 163 centimeters, you'd say that this is an illogical question. You'd say these are different quantities. When you ask if God can create a greater stone than himself, do you perceive God as being able to be measured in centimeters? You're saying that a single being rules the universe. How do you know this? Can you prove it? A lot of evidence exists about this. Let me tell you about one. In this realm that we call the universe, everything is connected. Everything is connected. For example, for an apple to exist here on Earth, we have to mention the solar system because that's how seasons occur. Everything that happens out there affects the Earth. For our solar system to function properly, the other solar systems need to function properly because anything that happens out there will also affect our solar system. So that's why we say that to create a single apple on Earth, so you need to be able to control the whole universe. That's how I can put together that this is all being controlled from a single source. The universe is estimated to be about 13.8 billion years old. Why did God wait this long to create humans? There's something fundamentally wrong with this question. We as humans are bound to time. So we use concepts such as before, after, quit, to wait, and not to wait. But God Almighty isn't bound by time. So it's irrational and incorrect to use concepts like he waited. Let's explain what not being bound by time means. If an entity, however big, is bound by space and time, it can operate in a different space at the same time. For example, if I expanded you to a size of a building, would you be able to simultaneously write a book in France, Turkey, and Argentina? You are bound by space and time. Your size changes nothing. But let's look at God Almighty. He has command over your body and command over another human's body in France. And he has command over the solar system, the stars, the plants, the smallest atoms, and even cells. Using this as a basis for my argument, I can say that the creator is not bound by space and time. If he is not bound by space and time, concepts like before, after, now, or later don't apply to him. These concepts apply to us just because these bind you. It's irrational to ask, why did he wait? He created time. He is not bound by it. He also doesn't exist in time because he isn't bound by space and time. He is eternal. So can you have two eternal creators? There can only be one of something we call eternal and absolute. There cannot be two. Let's explain this. Let's say we have two different colored dyes. One is pink and the other one is yellow. Let's grant them the quality of being eternal. Now let's see if this works. So I've granted both dyes with the quality of being eternal and gave you the pink dye. You went home and spilled the pink one and I spilled the yellow one here. Because we've granted them eternity, the pink dye has started taking over everything. First it took over the desk, the house, and then your neighborhood. It's taking over everything, it's going to keep going. And it's the same for the yellow one, it's taking over everything. So now I ask you, if the pink dye can't take over the areas that are yellow, can it be eternal? It can't. The same is true for the yellow one. If the yellow dye can't take over the pink areas, it can't be eternal. It is bound. So the existence of two eternal beings is not possible. Eternity is singular. 
Humans are so small compared to the universe. Why would God deal with such small beings? I see a flaw in this comparison. This comparison implies that humans are worthless. Worth is not determined by size. For example, a mountain can be huge, but not alive. So it cannot talk, act, or live. By comparison, a bee is much smaller than a mountain. But even though it's so small, the bee utilizes the mountain. It can say things like, this mountain was made for me. The bee's tools are more spectacular compared to the mountains. Humans also have the ability to perceive, live, be happy, see and hear, and to utilize the world around them. I don't see this even in the largest objects. The fact that humans were designed in this way, no matter how small in size, makes them very valuable. It's irrational to look at the human form and think humans are so small, hence they're worthless. Why would God even bother? Because size does not determine the worth. Okay, so an object's size doesn't determine its worth. I understand. So, why does God deal with such small beings? Why does he command them to do things or forbid them? To understand why humans were chosen, we need to understand why the universe exists. The reason the universe exists, the sun rises and sets, the rain falls, and thousands of other events like this happen, so humans can understand the messages behind these events and increase their love for their creator. So humans seek their creator and strive to know him, therefore it's logical that humans were chosen as the respondents. It's rational that humans are the addressees because humans possess the ability to perceive. A turtle can't look at the benefits of the sun and find a path to its creator, but a human can. A human can understand the meaning of the sun and other things in the universe and can determine who the artist is. So it is humans that can determine the significance of the universe. Babies that die go to heaven. Why didn't I die as a baby and now have to live with the risk of going to hell? First, we need to get rid of this thought. You didn't die as a baby, so you're bound to go to hell. You can say this instead. He went to heaven. Why am I going to hell? You could go either way. The choice is yours. Humans shouldn't be saying these things. It's against our nature. If I said to you, you'll play on one team your whole life, and no matter how talented you are, you'll never get promoted or demoted. You'll stay in the same team with the same salary and lifestyle. But you are so talented, and if you use that talent, you could get on the best teams and earn a higher salary and live a better life. What if I said, the choice is yours? Would you prefer a stationary life? Or if you believed in your talent, would you say, shouldn't I at least try? You have the potential to achieve the highest places in heaven. Why would you desire to die as a baby when you have that much potential and never reach that potential? You don't behave that way in any other area of life. And I'd like to ask you this. Is it better if babies went to hell? Would we also say, we also deserve to go to hell if our creator tortured them? A baby dies in an innocent state. Why would it go to hell? The creator can do as he pleases with his creation, brother. We wouldn't be so fussy if Allah created this baby directly in heaven instead of sending him to earth first. What does it matter if this baby was sent directly to heaven or was first sent to earth and then heaven? If Allah has created him for heaven, why does it matter where he goes first? Has he created you to go to hell? I know from many verses that you are not created for hell. The fact that he motivates you to do good, that he shows you the path to uncovering your true potential, that he has sent you prophets and speaks to you through the Quran, are signs that he has not created you for hell. But sometimes we perceive ourselves as having failed his commands. And at that point we think, I'm going to hell. And we say, I wish I were a baby so I could go to heaven. But you could also say, I wish I were using all of my capabilities better so I will be granted the highest levels of heaven. This is more logical. These are all the questions that we have for today. We'll be back with harder questions next time. You can ask us anything. We trust the Qur'an. You can find the answers to these questions in a risala e nur a genuine interpretation of the Qur'an. I tried to transfer to you what I learned from there. We're always open to all questions.